This patient with basal thumb arthritis is undergoing trapezectomy with an APL suspensoplasty. The skin incision is made on over the first dorsal compartment from the CMC joint of the thumb to the radial starlet over the length of the first dorsal compartment. In this incision, it is best to preserve and carefully note the superficial radial nerve. Do not attempt to identify and dissect every single superficial radial nerve as this would make it prone for neuroma formation and adherence to scar with a painful scar, which is a common complication. Once you are in the plane and are able to see the abductor policy's longer tendon, stay in that plane to avoid any damage to the superficial radial nerve as shown here. The abductor policy's longer tendon is a multi-strand tendon and is also a useful area to obtain short segments of tendon graft. In my practice, I will routinely perform a dequivalence release, which is a release of the first dorsal compartment prophylactically in the event if the patient develops any swelling that they do not get a secondary dequivalence syndrome secondary to this procedure. Here you can see the first dorsal compartment is being decompressed prophylactically to expose the abductor policies longus and the extensor policies brevis tendon. The multi-strand tendon is the abductor policies longus and the single strand tendon is the extensor policies brevis. One of the strands of the abductor policy's longest tendon is identified and chosen as a donor tendon and the incision is extended proximally until you reach the muscular tendinous belly and this is then harvested as a donor. The trapezium is next identified. And the deep branch of the radial artery is now dissected so as to allow for easy retraction to avoid damage during the trapezectomy. This is an important step, otherwise it remains very close to the trapezium and easily damaged during the trapezectomy. Adequate exposure and mobilization of the radial artery helps in its retraction and safety during the trapezectomy. The white debris seen there is secondary to the CMC injections of steroid that the patient has received in his treatment. The insertion of the abductor policies lo longus tendon that we have harvested is now easily dissected and preserved. The CMC joint is then identified by moving the metacarpus of the thumb Once the CMC joint has been identified, the capsule of the CMC joint is incised circumferentially to facilitate the trapezectomy. Care must be taken not to detach the APL segment that will be utilized for the reconstruction, which is attached to the metacarpus. The capsule of the CMC joint is then released circumferentially to ensure there will be adequate release of all the ligaments for the trapezectomy.
At all times, the radial artery must be protected and retracted away from the site of the trapezectomy to avoid damage. Care must be taken during the incision of the capsule on the volar surface of the CMC joint as there can be accidental damage to the FCR, which is an important component in the reconstruction of this procedure. Once the capsule of the CMC joint is released on all uh, surfaces, the joint, the trapezium is ready for its removal. Prior to its removal, it is noteworthy to check that you are in the right space, that proximally it's this STT joint and distally it's a CMC joint, as shown here. The osteotome has been placed in the distally in the CMC joint and now proximally in the STT joint, and therefore we have very clear that this is the trapezium. An osteotome is then used to bisect the trapezium with firm uh, hammering. Once the trapezium is broken into half, they remove piecemeal with the aid of bone rongers. Care must be taken on the volar surface not to damage the FCR tendon in the process. Also during on the uh, ulnar side, be careful not to damage the trapezoid. The trapezoid is now clearly seen in this picture in the depth of the wound. Approximately, it's the scaphoid that can be clearly seen. There is some degeneration in the scaphoid. In the depth of the wound, the FCR tendon is now becoming clearer. The FCR tendon is now cleared of all material and a tendon passer now is being passed through the FCR tendon and the free segment of the APL tendon earlier harvested is now passed through the uh, FCR tendon with the use of the tendon passer. This segment then is used to go around the intact APL as shown. The free segment then is wound round the FCR segment where previously it was weaved through by this APL segment. The thumb is now reduced into position with no basal subluxation and under tension this is repaired with 4-0 PDS suture to hold this reconstruction in place. This procedure, therefore, is a dynamic procedure that ties the FCR to the APL tendon. And therefore, in wrist loading, in uh, power grips, the FCR will pull upon the APL and bring the base of the thumb towards the volar surface and therefore prevent subluxation, producing dynamic stabilization. Any excess tendon that is available is then wound around the whole reconstruction to add volume and bulk to, pe to perform its interposition function for this reconstruction. As you can see, this reconstruction is, requires no bony attachment and all its purely a tendon transfer and a tendon sharing procedure. The volume of tendon obtained here is significantly more than the volume from a palmaris longus type of reconstruction or a FCR type of reconstruction.
This completes the reconstruction. The tourniquet is released to ensure there's no major bleeding from the radial artery. Hemostasis should be secured now. And as you can see, there's good reduction of the CMC joint. The wound is closed with subcuticular sutures and augmented with steroid tapes. Postoperatively, this patient will require immobilization in a volar cast for a six weeks period and then the patient is removed from splintage and encouraged active mobilization. You can see now that the CMC joint has no longer subluxating and is in good position.